I think, I truly believe that this guy right here next to me, this true champion and this gentleman, has been on the shelf long enough. Everyone wants to see Mikey Garcia. I want to see Mikey Garcia. And I don't care what I have to do or what it takes, he will be undisputed world champion someday. And he was already champion. But you know, it was a minor setback for a major comeback. He's still undefeated, 34 no, 28 knockouts. We want everybody to support Mikey Garcia and follow this young champion. You know, for years he was telling me you're his favorite fighter before he even met you. And now he sat near you for a whole fight night. Well, his, his brother and his father, his father was a hell of a trainer. His brother was a former world champion. He's one of the best trainers. I'm surprised that his brother, Robert Garcia, haven't received trainer of the year yet. It's, it's so crazy. Um, you know, over at the Garcia camp, they're building champions. And the only thing I want to do is continue to build champions and build young fighters. World set, world sweat. Look, what made you so excited when I mentioned Mikey to you the first time? You were real excited about it. What made you so excited about Mikey? Oh man, I, you seen all, all you seen nothing but the white, all white teeth. <laughs> I got to show it. Um, uh, Mikey Garcia, even when he was signed to another company, um, I still invited him to talk to our gym to watch me train. I remember that. If, if, if I can help him in any way, his brother already is, is a marvelous trainer. Only thing I want to do is just tweak certain things and make him a pay-per-view star, which I know I can do. Speaking of pay-per-view, it's so hard today to sell any pay-per-view, but if Floyd Mayweather fights Conor McGregor, I don't know if it sells 10 million pay-per-views or 8 million. Well, I, um, um, I can't really say what it's going to do, but hopefully this man right here on my side is on the undercar. And, and we're steady building, you know, we, we're building. You know, um, I'm sitting down with Robert Garcia in a few minutes, and Mikey, you know, and I like this, I like this young hey, Robert, kid. Robert, get in, Robert. Robert, come over here. I, I want to let everyone know, you know, even like for the Madonna fight. This man right here had Madonna ready. That motherfucker was coming, and uh, we done it twice. And the thing is, is uh, like I said before, and I'm going to say it again, I'm surprised that that Robert Garcia ha having received trainer of the year. He's a hell of a trainer, has a lot of talent, but right here, you know, this is the Uno. <laughs> and we, we're, we're, we're building young fighters, you know. Uh, we got a young fighter right here, um, Josue from the Bronx, New York. He's undefeated too. He's undefeated too as a professional. Um, only 17 years old and he's 4-0. If I'm not mistaken, three knockouts. You know, I still got a sharp memory. We build in our camp. I can't stop us. As long as I got a, a, a fighter like this and a hell of a trainer like this, we're gonna continue to grow and build and, and build champions. Robert, what do you think of Floyd Mayweather? Oh, well, what can I say? You know, we talk shit. Everybody knows. Everybody knows. We talk shit. He's, he's not bad, him. right? He's not bad. <laughs> no, 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 no. We understand business. I'm a businessman, not just a fighter. And I understand, you know, I don't care what I said about all this and that, all that, you know, one thing I know, I know how to, I know how to take guys to that next level, and the ultimate goal is to make a pay-per-view star. And with this talent right here and this trainer right here, we can do it. Mikey, he just offered that you will fight on the undercard of Mayweather McGregor. What is well, that? Hopefully we talking. <laughs> we negotiate right now. We talking. But what do you think about that, Mikey? Uh, I don't even have words, man. Just, yeah, you know, huge, who you want? Man. Jose Aldo? <laughs> right? There's a lot of different fighters out there. Do we fight another oh, MMA no. guy? Oh! <laughs> uh, <laughs> you know what I mean? I don't know, maybe. You no, know, no, we won't. We won't. Boxers versus John UFC Jones. Versus UFC fighters. <laughs> you know what we want to do? Um, it, it, of course, you know, John Jones is with the MMA, but, you know, we still got to communicate and put some things together, me and him. You know, we love John Jones to be a part of uh, TMT. We study growing. And it's not just about us making money. It's about the talent winning. And that's what we believe. And that's why so many promoters hate us and dislike us, because we believe in a talent winning when it's all said and done. Bobby Jack, he's a multi-millionaire. And I can name so many other fighters that that's made a ton of money. This guy right here will be at the be, be back at the top. Just a minor setback for a major comeback. So, last thing, what do you tell all the fans about Floyd Mayweather, Conor McGregor? Because the whole world is breaking the internet. Oh man, oh man, I I gotta say, Conor McGregor, um, he's tough. 
he's a tough competitor. Um, and most guys that count him McGregor, you know, every time he go out there and fight, when he kick ass, he kick ass in the stand-up position. So if the fight does happen, um, which I truly believe is going to be record-breaking, um, I'm truly blessed way beyond belief. Um, and I can I, and I can, I can't overlook no one. I think in his last fight, it, it was it, uh, the guy was too heavy, but he's gonna be okay. And we're gonna have a uh, I'm pretty sure we're gonna have a master plan to make that fight happen. It hasn't happened yet, um, but we locked down some dates. Me and my team, me and Al Heyman, me and Leonard Ellaby, we locked down some dates in different countries, in different cities in the United States. And you already know what my number is. 100 million. That's just the guarantee. That's just the guarantee. But we don't talk about my number on the back end. And of course, you know any fighter that I fight, my number is, my guarantee is 100 million. And we'll talk about the numbers on the back end. Now I know for the Berto fight, I think we made somewhere upwards of 70 million. But that wasn't bad for Berto. You know, I made 70 million for the fight. It wasn't bad. But I'm not really worried about me. You know, um, I believe in making smart investments. But I'm ready to invest right here. <laughs> Mikey, did you have fun tonight? That's a great investment. <laughs> did you have fun, Mikey? Oh, yeah. I think I think I think what we should do to, today is go get a good dinner. That's right. Probably and go to this. Uh, no, this is, these are good guys. I'm the bad guy. These are good guys. Well, you know, have dinner, talk, see what we come up with. Hopefully, we come up with a master game plan. And next year, when y'all vote. Train of the year. Floyd, <laughs> sure. sure. how happy are you to be able to be in this position where you could even get a guy like Mikey Garcia and help Robert to get to a, a, even an even bigger level? I just don't feel that it's right. You know when when you know like when a fighter like Jesse Vargas wanted to make a move, I never put him in a chokehold. I said, yo, go out there and try to find find what's best for you. I didn't do that, and I feel that we should we shouldn't do that to no fighter. We shouldn't. Uh, that's being selfish. Let a man go out there and make a, a, a great living for him and his family. And that's all I did. When it was time for Floyd Mayweather to go out, I said, you know what? I'm going to write this check. Go we'll give it to this company. And change the way boxing has been has been handled throughout the years. And that's what I did. So are you still surprised how much attention you get? You put the littlest thing out and it blows up into this big thing. Are you still surprised how much attention you can get? Um, social media is crazy. You know, um, you know, three world champions right here, you know. Let's not get it twisted, you know. Um, but social media, social media is, is crazy, you know. Just, you know, with Instagram, Twitter, and Facebook, I think every time I push that, well, my social media push the button, I think we touch somewhere upwards of 40 million people. And like I said, I'm blessed. Absolutely. Last thing, if Triple G fights Canelo, who wins? Um, if I was Canelo's promoter, I wouldn't even I wouldn't even fight Triple G. Canelo don't need Triple G. Triple G needs Canelo. And we can just look at different fighters. Sugar Ray Leonard, he went he jumped different weight classes and went up. Floyd Mayweather jumped different classes and went up. Um, so many different champions. Roberto Duran, uh, Phoenix Trinidad, Oscar De La Hoy, and the list goes on and on. How many different champions? You know, went from you know went from a smaller weight class and went up, or not even a small weight class, but jump weight class to show that they're true fighters and that they have heart. Triple G, you haven't shown me any heart yet. He want to stay at 160. No, that's what we're not going to do. You know, at first, at, at one particular time, everybody kept on saying Floyd Mayweather's a coward. He's a chicken. You know, he was scared to fight Pacquiao. Once again, I told you, I'm not just a fighter. I'm a businessman. And when it at one particular time to fight. I was going to make somewhere upwards of a, a guaranteed probably 60 or 70 million. I mean, probably 60 million. Then I could have made 100 million total. Um, I didn't rush, I took my time. It's about having patience, but I took my time and had patience. I made 300 million. I can't see, I can't say what he made. You know, I think it was real long. But if, if, if Pacquiao was my fighter, he would have made a lot more. When you fought Canelo, you made him hit the ropes, you had time to lean back. Look what a devastating country he just saw this weekend. Well, you know, I'm not here to talk negative no, of about anyone. Canelo is 
a hell of a champion. He's a good champion. I mean, he busts his ass, go out there, and he do what he have to do. When we face each other, I'll have more experience, and I was a better man. And I was a better counterpuncher, a better boxer, just all around the board. But Canelo, he's making a lot of noise in the sport of boxing. But uh, it's, a, it's a lot of champions that's, that's making a lot of uh, noise in the sport of boxing. But all I gotta say is this. Forget the rest of the companies. It's about making other promotions. Sure. Let me give fighters opportunities. Sure. We have a lot of fighters under the banner. But the ultimate goal is for the fighter to win. We don't want to just teach fighters, but we don't want to say, okay, we put you in a fight and you made a lot of money. What we want to do is make sure we can help you take that money so you can have some when your career is over like myself. I mean, with or without, with or without the McGregor fight, you know, I still retire with hundreds of millions. And when I was in the fight game, I think I made somewhere upwards of $800 million. And I'm still, and my money is still making money. And as far as in real estate, I made smart investments. And you know, I can think I got somewhere upwards of 1.2 billion in real estate as of right now. But just smart investments. I'm, like I said before, I'm just truly blessed. And I'm thankful uh, for all the people that went out and bought pay-per-view all those years. What about the TMT gear? That's selling great. Um, I think right now with you know with the with the money team and the movement, uh, we're making 10 to 20 million dollars a year. And that's just all online. I think Robert, that's it. <laughs> you had a good time tonight? Hey, how we did? Mikey? That's all right, man. I got him, I got him. You gotta get him, you gotta get him, you gotta get him. You know, Robert and Floyd were champions at the same time. Of course they were. They never yeah, fought. You never fought, Robert. He never fought you. Well, Robert was a tough motherfucker when I went back. <laughs> I said I was talking all this shit. I said I was talking all this shit, and Robert shooting the shit at him, having fun his business. That's right. Now I wouldn't look at that motherfucker. I'm like this motherfucker tough. Yeah, yeah. I mean, cause you gotta realize, that motherfucker. You know what? Me, I got a. You know, I got a. You know, the Mexicans die hard. They gonna go out swinging. You know me, so I gotta be. You know, I fought so many them tough Mexicans, and I know. Hey, you know, it's kill to be killed with them. You know, I had to, you know, I had to tighten my defense up. Because, you know, ever since I was young, it was pushing me to the limit. How big of a star can Mikey be, Floyd? Household. We're going we to make him a household name. That's what it's about. And if we can't, we're going we gonna to try our best. Because he got the talent. And, and he, got that, he got that look. <laughs> you know, he got that charisma. He got that young look. You know, he's a quiet assassin. Sir. He don't say much. He let his hands do the talking. I'm the pro I'm the promoter. That's my job to go out there and say, hey, you know what? This is what Mikey gonna do. Mikey yeah. don't say much. He just put that. He put that hat on. Go out there. Ba ba ba. Can he beat pound for pound? Absolutely. I'm, I'm, he still. He haven't. He haven't lost. So I still don't know why he's not rated. He somewhere. is pound for pound. He has to be up there. You know, in a in a in a top ten pound for pound. So what would, would you? Mikey told me once that he would want to see what it would be like to get in the ring with you. Would you guys even do a little sparring session? Just Mikey ain't finna be beating on this old man. <laughs> <laughs> ain't nobody gonna be beating on this old man. I feel good. <laughs> I, you know, I left this. I left with all my faculties. You know, I think it's gonna be so entertaining if we can do it. If we can happen to put a boxer with an MMA fighter. You know, because like I, I can't, I can't overlook that guy. Me myself, I'm not gonna overlook him. We haven't made the fight happen yet. But um, if we can tweak it, we can tweak a few things. I'm pretty sure we can get him a um, not a good payday, but a great payday. Could, could you break your own record, Floyd? Considering how big that fight would be when you're merging two sports. Well, I, well, my number, well, my numbers for the Pacquiao fight. Um, I know we was at 4.6. I, I know we're somewhere around five million now. Wow. Five million homes, pay per view, and then, even if we're not at five million, it sound good. <laughs> I know we 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 we, we over four point six, so we gonna say five, man. Um, we probably can break that number. It's possible. Anything is possible. Absolutely. What do you tell all the fans who love you and support you and want to see you back in the ring? Well, I'm only if I do fight, it's only against Conor McGregor. That's my gonna be my only fight, and not against no nobody else. Because this is just so this matchup is so intriguing. You have a fighter against an MMA fighter. You know, one of the best MMA fighters to ever, to
to do the to, to do combat and stand up and do it. I mean, he's a strong fighter. And um, when I look at him fight, he's a little faster than I thought he was. So if the fight happens, you know, I can't overlook the guy. If Connor's watching this play, what do you tell him? Um, I'm pretty sure if we make the fight happen, uh, I'm pretty sure you're going to push me to the limit. You say anything is possible. It's possible I can have that hat. <laughs> It's not impossible. <laughs> <laughs> got the shark. Where y'all? Y'all got your car? Y'all got your car? Yeah, follow me. Uh -huh. Go grab my car. Uh, oh, let's talk about the oh, I gotta talk about my bald new jacket. They cheated us. She ain't gonna have me see one thing. I'll be the man like this. Somebody come. Hey, where, where's the car? Oh, I stand at Rafa Town. By the way, after all these years, Floyd, how's your Spanish? Well, when we talk, my Spanish okay. Um, okay, we got a little light right here. There you go. It's always lights, camera action. Now, boy, you know my man Badu right here. Um, unification, Bob. Overseas. Ooh, we gonna get that money. Oh, well, you know, uh, I'm doing my job. You know, you know, this multi man there right here. You know, I'm, I'm doing, I'm doing my job, and I want to continue to, um, you know, when he had a little minor setback before, a little flash knockdown, quick little stoppage, but it wasn't nothing. He's world champion right now, and um, we see. James Miguel versus Medina, and then we see Badu Jack against Medina. And also, Badu Jack beat the guy that beat James Miguel. If I'm not mistaken, am I right? So, yeah. um, like I say, it's, you know, real humble. Gentlemen, I do all the talking for the fighters. Those that's real, real quiet. And those that like to talk shit, we gonna talk shit together. <laughs> um, he ain't okay. You know, he got that new house built in that gated community. Uh, new, beautiful baby girl, him and his wife. Um, great guy. What, what else can I say? How happy were you for to be able to get Ishe a world championship and now you got Badu as your second champion? Are you sure? What about oh, Mickey, uh, Bay? Mickey Bay? Oh, okay. Mickey Bay. Mickey Bay. And Mickey Bay finna fight for the world title again, so I'm doing my job. You know, but I put you in that position just for the fighter to win. Now, if I'm not mistaken, um, Ishe actually is finna fight. I think a couple more boxes and he's fighting for the world title again. So I'm doing my job as a promoter. My job is to set the fight, the fighters up, help them build, build their fan base, and uh, make a lot of money and become a household name and hopefully go down in history as one of the best fighters. That's my job. What do you say about that, Badu? I'm getting hard. See, Badu getting hit. He may, he may go up like this. He may go up to light heavyweight. He's going to cruiserweight. Okay, we're gonna, yeah. go, we're gonna, he's gonna go to light heavyweight first. What are we gonna fight? We gotta go see the fight that tune about. Whatever, whoever, whoever gonna pay the most, we gonna fight a, um, a unification bout. At the unification bout, then we gonna move to uh, a light heavyweight, fight for the world title a light heavyweight. Then we gonna move to cruiserweight, and he gonna he gonna bounce between the cruiserweight and light heavyweight. And then I done my job. And he, I think he gonna become body trainer. He help help me. We continue to go get these fighters and build these fighters and take them to the next level. If Mike is over here, you're a man with a fighter. What can you tell Mike about the experience of being a fighter with Floyd? It's uh, just a blessing. I started from nothing. Like I had a manager put me in a house with no furniture, nothing, and now I have like a small mansion and a, and a, and a green belt. So I mean, I, I've done my job. Hard and dedication. And you got the best you, guy. You know when it, when I got with Badu, when I got with Badu, you know. Um, he didn't have a, I meant she had, I meant she got an automobile, I meant she got a car, you know, I meant she got a nice house. He used to build him a nice house from the ground up. And the only thing I want to do is keep contributing to him and his family and helping them. You know, I didn't come to him and say, you know what, uh, I want to take all the money and get these fighters a little bit of money. I said, you know what, I got, I'm going to eat a little bit. Well, other promoters, they want to take everything and yeah. get the fighters a little bit. I could have asked for a better promoter. I'm saying, I, I, I just want to, I, I got to get a little bit. But I believe 
and the talent getting the lion's share. And they don't like that, that I, I'm teaching fighters about that. Mikey, you were nodding your head, you agree with them. <laughs> Why? Definitely agree. You know what, we don't, like I said, we don't call names out. No, no, no. We don't, we just, he, he should be treated fair. He should be treated fair. I'm a fighter, he was once a fighter, and we know how it is to be on both sides. Certain promoters, when certain promoters have never fought before, they don't know how it is to be on the other side. Yeah. Man, it's, it's, it's fucking grueling. Training camp is grueling. And if you got a, if you got a wife or a girlfriend at home, when you train it and then you go see your wife and your girlfriend and they bitch and you're like, oh shit. <laughs> so it, it, it's a lot, it's a lot. Yeah. Uh, you gotta sacrifice something to get something and that's what I did. And now, the girl is next, right? What do you uh, tell him? Um, get some rest after the fight. Let's get it on in September. They're gonna do what they have to do. Um, I think, just honestly speaking, I like, like, I really, I like James Miguel. I really like his sister. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, okay. So, but uh, James Miguel, you know, he's a great fighter. Um, and a, a very exciting fighter. And what we want to do is continue to put great shows on. T tonight could have been a, l a little bit better. Uh, tonight, I think for the fighters, it was more of a learning experience for the fighters. Um, I'm happy that Tabidi got the win, but me, I'm, a, I'm always an honest person. I thought the fight was a lot closer. Um, but I guess the judges were sitting in a, in a different seat than I was sitting in. But, um, I wish we had those judges in my fight. Absolutely. <laughs> I think, you know, and uh, you think about it, and when you just look at the, when you just look at certain things, the James the Gal fight could have been called a draw before, you know, his fight. I mean, that's just my honest opinion. Do judges need a change, Floyd? Do we need a change in, in as far as judges so we don't have these things happen again? I'm not here to talk bad about judges. All I want to say is I'm not sitting in the same seats as the judges, and we got different visions, me and the judges. Floyd, who's a better actor, Denzel Washington or Will Smith? <laughs> um, I'm, I'm cool with both of them, so y'all not gonna have me in the, in the middle of this shit. What did you say, Robert? Denzel Washington. What did you say, Mikey? Denzel. But I said Will Smith. Will Smith. Will Smith. Um, they're, they're two different actors. What are you one looking at? One is funny and one is funny. No, no. Yeah. Step back. <laughs> she gotta go on 24 7 and fight that. I already know that. All access. All access. Well, he's at I, I say 24 7. I created the motherfucking show, so. But, you know, 24 7. 24 7 it is the B side. All access is the A side. Uh, in boxes, Showtime is the A side. Um, uh, CBS and Showtime, they came to me for another big deal. I'm like, I ain't got no. I ain't. I can't put no more money in the hood. You know, we about to make the we about to make the earth flip upside down. Y'all give me some more money. Um, um, I want them to write the check. You know what I've learned? You know throughout the years, uh, and I said this before: a boxer make money when he boxes. A dentist make money when he's working on teeth. Uh, a car salesman makes money when he's selling cars. But New York real estate, you make money when you sleep. Yeah. <laughs> That's right. Tell us about that watch, Floyd, really quick. Oh, this is a, you know, you know, uh, it's a little summer look, little bright colors. You know, I got my Miami, I got these like Miami colors, bright colors. Happy colors, you know. Why should I be mad? A little G-Shop, but I've done it a little bit different. I made it rose gold, put a couple rubies right here. It's 1042, kind of late, but dinner time. <laughs> We're in Sin City, we don't sleep, we don't have a, Oh, we got a ball tonight. Uh, you know, um, talk business. Talk business. I mean, you gotta realize Robert Garcia and Mikey Garcia come from a great family. Their father was a hell of a trainer. You see what he did with Fernando Vargas? I don't forget. I see everything. <laughs> and um, he installed, he installed boxing in his boys and his family. And now they're taking things to the next level. Uh, I look forward to coming out there to the training camp 
And uh, if, if I can lend a, a helping hand to a Robert and his team, I would like to come out there and help a little bit. Do you see resemblance the way your family was all boxing and their family is the same? Oh, absolutely. Well, you got to realize, you know, I, I really feel bad, you know, for my Uncle Roger. He's going through a lot. So, you know, I had to, you know, I was traveling a lot around the world and um, he had a caretaker, you know, one of the, uh, the boxing trainers, uh, Otis Pimpleton. You know, he lives with my Uncle Roger. He makes sure he's okay. But he also trains fighters. So I, you know, I got a call a few times, you know, that, you know, my uncle, his memory, he has memory loss. Sometimes he forgets who I am. And it, and it hurts my feelings because we was fighting professional at the same, at one particular time. So I thank God for making me a defensive fighter. Do you think that's not taught enough anymore, Floyd, defensiveness? Because a lot of, a lot of gyms, a lot of kids don't even know about defense. Shit, um, he yeah, defensive fight. He don't really take no punishment, you know. And, and one thing they don't get him credit for, the Garcia family is very, very smart. They made some smart investments too in real estate. They know what they're doing also. And they learned that from their dad. <laughs> <laughs> Mike, did you tell him about your 11 acre? I don't know. He bought an 11 acre mansion. Shit, he know what he's doing. <laughs> he gonna be a okay. It's not by. It's not about working harder. It's about working smarter. And that's what I did. Everyone be like, oh, Floyd buying this, he buying that. He gonna run out of money. Oh no, not me. So, Floyd, I got you a question. What if Conor McGregor comes to Robert Garcia and says, Robert, can you train me? He better, he better fucking train him. <laughs> is that okay? <laughs> he better fucking train him. Is that okay, Robert? I guess it is. He better fucking train him. <laughs> if, if, if Robert trained him, you know, Robert had them boys on my ass. Now, hold on. <laughs> So, uh, but I'm just being honest, man. I'm so happy for all these young fighters. And I mean that from the bottom of my heart. I really mean that. I'm so proud of these young fighters. Even when Mikey was on the other side, you know, I, I used to say to myself, hopefully someday I can work with that kid. I would love to have, have him, you know, under my stable so I can work with him and just help them. Because I think that other companies do things old, the old school way. You know, we like to do things the new school way. Like when we was in a fight, I seen something and I pointed certain things out to Mikey and Robert, what we was talking about. But I like to keep that private. You know, I don't want to tell my secret because you know how they, they take my secrets and they run with it and they like to get the credit for it. And I ain't gonna say nothing. So y'all got enough now. Yeah. Y'all can chop it and cut it and you know and you don't get to work. And I gotta, you know, um like I get of course I gotta talk about being from Fight Height. Thank you, Ben, because when the world was against me at one particular time, um, and it was crazy, you know, when I sit right here and I, and I think about certain things. You know, I'll tell them, I had some bad days in the boxing gym. Um, a couple of fights could have been born, but I never had a bad painter. <laughs>